We've done an awful lot of videos here that included absolutely no muffling of any kind anywhere on the kit. Today, we're going to dig into several locations of muffling on both the snare drum and the floor tom, the effects they have, and ways to mitigate it if it's too much. If you're one of the people out there who's watched the show and thinks that we are anti-muffling players here at Sounds Like a Drum, it's not the case. We prefer to think of ourselves as players and musicians who would like to get a good sound first and then use muffling after the fact to sculpt the sound rather than using muffling as a band-aid to fix the sound of the drum. Today we've got these drums tuned to where we're happy already before we even put anything on them and we're going to get into the muffling location with these gels that we're using today and also what happens frankly when it's not working so well. First let's hear the drums with no muffling on them at all. Yay! They sound like drums. Now, let's start to get into just what happens when we use a single piece, full-sized single piece, as you'll see a little later, we're gonna make some adjustments on the snare drum. Right away, it becomes abundantly clear that one full-size piece of this Evans gel is a pretty hefty effect unless we are right at the edge of the drum. Versus some other gels on the market, these EQ pods have a little more weight to them, a little more heft, so one complete piece goes a lot further than other products we've used in the past. The great thing is we can cut these up with a pair of scissors and start to get into what happens when we use part of one or perhaps maybe multiple parts distributed around the drums. This is a lot more manageable and is a lot more focused in terms of exactly what we're getting rid of and how we're sculpting the sound of the drum. Just like most everything else that we do here at the show, we like to use a little bit of anything that we're using at a time to get a real sense of just what an effect we're having and then you can add more if you need to rather than starting with a lot and perhaps making assumptions based on that. Now let's take the other half of the piece that we cut in half and try out what happens when we put them opposite each other on the drum to get a bigger effect but not in a single location. This is working pretty effectively, though I am hearing one prominent overtone, so now let's experiment with having them asymmetrically toward one side of the drum. Okay, this for me here and for us is probably the most effective way that I would use these because they're giving me a certain amount of control, a certain amount of muffling, but the drum still feels nice and wide open and dynamic while being controlled particularly in the upper overtones. Now granted, you can do whatever you want in the world. You can put them in the middle of the drum if you want to. This is a great wide open experimental place to live with little pieces of muffling around the drum. And depending on where you place them, perhaps relative to the snare bed, perhaps relative to a mounting device, you may get different results. So make sure you try out all the possibilities. If 
if you're enjoying what you're seeing today, please follow the link below to our Patreon. It's the best way to help us continue to get to make these shows, show you new cool products, do these kinds of demonstrations. There's a lot of options under there. Follow the link and check it out. A little bit about what happens in terms of the range that your drum is tuned in for a second here. We chose to go pretty high with this because these are fairly powerful muffling devices that we're using today. Now, having said that, you can muffle at any tuning range and plenty of people would prefer a high wide open drum versus a lower heavily muffled sound. Your results will absolutely vary depending on the size of your drum, the type of head you're using, and most importantly, how you tune it. So lower places are gonna have a totally different effect with the muffling, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure no, no matter where you're tuning your drum in terms of its range, that you experiment with placement and amount. Speaking of low tuned stuff, let's go through the same process with the floor tom, which is tuned pretty low. First thing to notice here as we move the complete piece around on the drum is that it's having a less dramatic effect than we got on the snare. This is not particularly surprising because this is a lower tuned drum. There's a lot of air moving here. So in addition to it also being a larger drum, more mass on here is having a little bit less of an effect because of that tuning. What this means for us is that we have some options with using a complete piece or we can get into the cut up piece and start to discover what happens when we do different locations with that. All things considered, I could go either way with this. Making littler pieces on the floor tom and distributing them, depending on the tuning range, might be a more effective solution, but frankly, we can put an awful lot of it on the floor tom and still get a pretty great sound. Something to keep in mind when we start to put a large amount of mass onto our batter heads, first of all, is that the dynamic range is going to change. We're lowering the overall volume at a given intensity of strike, whether it's a snare or the floor tom. Additionally, the strike zone that you're choosing on the drum is going to elicit a slightly different sound. So a heavily muffled drum played toward the edge is going to behave way differently than if we didn't have that muffling on there. For those of you paying fairly close attention, you may have noticed that as we move the muffling away from the edge of the drum and toward the center, we're moving through different parts of the overtone series and muffling different aspects of the sound. This means for us that if we're really paying attention, we can actually tune the muffling a little bit. Right at the edge, we're getting the very highest overtones, and as we move toward the center, we're getting into lower and lower iterations of those. Depending on the size and amount of muffling that you're using, you can actually go after specific overtones that might be bothering you in a given space or in a recording situation or something like that, which is why it's worth having smaller pieces and also larger ones at your disposal. It's worth noting also that when we add mass to a certain area on a drum head like this in an asymmetrical fashion, we're interrupting the resonance of that drum in an asymmetrical way. It's similar to adding or 
removing tension at a single lug in terms of the effect that the resonance gets on the rest of the drum. This means that for us, if we want to attenuate a certain frequency or a certain frequency range, the more symmetrical we can make the muffling, the more effective and directive that's going to be. A very perfect real world example of this is any kind of studio ring that's giving you the exact same coverage all the way around the circumference of the drum. That's going to give you really, really even attenuation of the overtones and sometimes give you almost too much fundamental sometimes. We hope this experiment was enlightening for those of you watching who are big mufflers and also people who never ever put anything on their drums. It just goes to show you that no matter what range you tune them in or what style of music you play, having the opportunity to adjust and mold the sound of the drums quickly, especially on a rehearsal or a gig or something like that, is a tool that we can all use.